Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. It is time you guys to talk about the 10 best picture nominees for the Oscars 2024 edition. This is going to be my personal ranking. Of course, your ranking is going to look different than mine. It's going to look different from X, Y, and Z other creators. You know, they're, they're not going to look the same. I mean, they might in some places, but I assure you my ranking will be to different from yours. So hopefully it's not too late for me to return this damn thing because it turned off. Like something just told me, look, as I'm on there, literally made it to number eight. This was the last Best Picture nominee movie that I did watch. This is one that wasn't really even on my radar. I went in there completely honestly blind. The movie, when it, when it first started, it was giving me kind of like Parasite vibes. And I'm like, oh, I like Parasite. Maybe I'm going to really like this movie. And it wasn't nothing like that. <laughs> honestly, as I was watching this movie, I was like, okay, you're number 10 on my list. Like there's no if, ands, or buts. It's a movie that I saw it once. I appreciated it too. I see you. I acknowledge you as being nominated, but it's one that I'm, I don't really see myself going back to watching. Um, basically, we're just following a family, a family of Nazis who literally are living next door to a concentration camp. We don't actually see what's going in the camp, but we do hear what's happening because they're literally, it's like, it's like your next door neighbors. You hear the screams, you hear the gunshots, you hear the killing, the abusing. Um, you see the smoke from where they're bringing up the Jews. Honestly, they're just living their days. Like it's just, you know, another freaking day. They're just so used to it. They're just trying to ignore it. They're just literally living their day, day to day. Raising their kids, running a household and the general or whatever the hell he is, you know, like going to work. It was just easily for me number 10. It's just one that I really don't see myself um, re-watching. So Mastro, Mastro, Mastro? If y'all knew, I don't know how to pronounce things. I will mispronounce so many names per this title's name that I, cause I keep trying to say Maestro, <laughs> like, Teacher. I haven't had to say that disclaimer in so long. Maestro, just grow with it, y'all. It's another one. I see it. I accept it. It's there. It's just one that I do not see myself re-watching. It's one that wasn't even on my radar. Um, I honestly just watched it because it was Oscar nominated. Lady, you knew, you knew. You see him and you know he's gay. So why are you trying to get all up on that? Because like my gay, my gay radar, I have like no gay radar, y'all. But I knew that he was gay. I said, sir, why are you trying to get up in that kitty cat when you like the ding dong? He's there with his wife on one side and holding hands with his lover. And she's just like, still getting all upset. Like, madam, madam, you knew. Moving on. And this is where everybody's gonna hate me, but it's okay. Y'all, it is okay. Okay, when a movie is not for everybody okay because you love the movie that is okay that is great that's fantastic i am so happy that you love you adore this movie okay that doesn't mean that everybody in the whole freaking wild world needs to also love this movie okay so calm the fuck down great experience great movie like technically great movie Okay, I'm not denying it that. I am not denying that it is a great looking movie, great directed movie, great acting movie, great sounding movie, great, great, great. Now when it comes to enjoyment, that was when it wasn't that great. I just did not enjoy it. When I saw this in theaters, when I tell y'all the first 30 minutes, I was like, I can't believe it's just been 30 minutes. Like it had to have been like an hour. Then I try to watch it at home, just like week. You follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I'm always on the stories and I was talking about trying to watch it. And then I go, you know what? I gave up an hour in. I said, no, no, it's just not for me. This is another one that's based off of a true story. We're following Oppenheimer, who is the creator of the atomic bomb. And to me, that just wasn't very interesting. It just wasn't, and that's okay, because I really don't care who made the bombs. You know, maybe you shouldn't have made the bomb. Oh. 
gone too far. Stag Arlie is still on the run from authorities. You haven't done anything. It's not like they can arrest you. <laughs> this one was one when I did see the trailer, it really intrigued me. I said, oh, that looks kind of funny. It just this author who's just tired of not really making it big and selling his books like his books aren't selling very well because he's trying to write like real literature and to basically put like a fuck you to the world to the publication to whatever he writes is very absurd book and needless to say they all fucking ate it up his mother's going through some things his brother Sherlin King Brown absolutely adored him for me he was the best part in the movie I absolutely loved it I like when he's all like I'm gonna take a lover if I want I'm gonna take my lover right now. I said, oh yes, you take that lover. I look forward to your fine cooking. Oh no, no, don't do that. All we've got is whatever's in that walk-in. No new deliveries till January. So the holdovers, I feel like I went into this movie with so many expectations. I had heard so many people talk great, great things about it. And it's like a Christmas movie. Then I saw it. You're not going to be like a, a, a go-to Christmas movie for me. We're following a group of people that they're at a prep school. They're the people that are holding over the, the school because they're the left behinders. They have no place to go as far as the kids go. Um, and then the students that are the students, the teachers have to stay behind to watch the kids that were left behind. You know, they still need caring for and guidance and making sure that they are, you know, not getting into trouble sort of deal. Um, but I really enjoyed the story. It was really, really good. It was very, you know, it, did, it, it, it didn't give me like full Christmas vibes. Also, I didn't watch it during Christmas, so that may have something. I would rewatch at some point, but just not anytime soon. Anytime soon. But I do feel like this is a movie that definitely would warrant a rewatch. And I feel like it would get more love with the more times that I that I see that. Top five before we get there. If you haven't already, don't forget to give this video a like, comment, share, subscribe. And let me know down below what your list is looking like. Go ahead, let me know. Nobbenheimer is your number one. And that is quite all right. I'm so glad, like I said, that you love it. My number five is... You always wife. Stop. I did not kill him. That's not the point. I think she did. I think she got on and threw her husband up off that room. It's always the wife you can't trust the wife. So this is a courtroom drama. We're following this family who lives up in the middle of nowhere. When I see a house that's literally up in the middle of nowhere, like if you by the woods by, by yourself or up in the mountains like this, I always say that it's a murder waiting to happen. It's always funny because when, I mean obviously like not because there's like a good dead person, but then it's like, like everybody freaking fights like all the families when you're married everybody fights and then obviously they bring those fights out in the courtrooms and I always wanted to be like y'all act like y'all never been in a freaking fight did she did she not and you never know you literally never know because at the end they never showcase exactly what happened like I kept waiting for like the end to show like oh you know he just kind of like who stumbled and fell like was it really an accident did or did he commit the suicide and or did the wife like you know push him right up off the way you're next. So, Killers of the Flower Moon, I'm not gonna lie, it took me two days to watch it. <laughs> I kind of started kind of late. I do want to read the book. I think I had seen a review on it that I was just like, eh, I don't know, I'm gonna feel about it now. But because I heard that the book, they're focusing more on the Osage community versus. The white man. The story is just absolutely terrible. It's just terrible. It just shows again what the white man be doing. And then yeah, everybody's always like, oh, it's your color people doing all this. I'm just saying, who's the one who's always literally stealing land, acting like they discover shit when there was people already there? You're killing, you're raping, you're manipulating. Like, like who really are the criminals here? I mean... You have all the feelings because it's just like they're they're going through so much. Nobody's giving a fuck about them. And then finally, once like all these freaking people are, are like dying, they bring in people to try to do investigation. And then wh what do these people do? What are, uh, uh, 
offing off all those people that are trying to help until, you know, we finally get some people that really come and help. And it's freaking insane, y'all. It is insane. This was such a beautiful movie. I quite enjoyed it. I had heard so many people talking about this and all the love and all of it. And, and I didn't really know what to expect, but I just thought it was such a beautiful, like, could have been love story, could have been friends to lovers, but unfortunately the odds were not in their favor one reason or another and when the opportunity kind of finally presented itself for them to reunite officially in the flesh versus just being like Skype, it was too late. At the end of it made me cry a little bit, like I was shocked. I was just like, oh my god, like, like I don't know what I was expecting. Was I expecting her to like run off with him? No, but at the same time like I kind of did. Yeah, I'm meant to be. If I wasn't severely injured, I would beat you off right now, Ken. I'll beat you off with you any day, Ken. Hold my ice cream, Ken. All right, Ken, you're on. I love Barbie. I, I don't fucking care. I really enjoyed it. I, like I said in my review, I used to play with Barbies. Barbies were like a big part of my life. Um, this movie literally made me feel what a lot of you guys feel when you watch a lot of these movies that are based on like toys or cartoons you know like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Batman, Superman um you know just like all these movies that you guys literally grew or like the toys that you guys grew up watching and then they made a really good movie and then you're just like oh my god like I have such nostalgia for it well I never really understood that when people would talk about it. I was just like, oh, okay, like, what is that? Okay, whatever. When I tell you every time I talk about this fucking movie, I get so emotional. Like, I already feel myself like I kind of want to cry. It has such a special place in my heart. I play with Barbies way too, like, longer than I should have. And then I save my Barbies, you know, and then I give them to my little sister and then she fucking destroyed them. And then it made me cry so much. Like, she literally played hard with them. I know I've talked about this. And I talk about this every single time. I'm going to keep talking, telling my story on Barbie because I just want to try to realize, like, how special... They, these, they are for me. Like, I literally understand the message behind be whatever you want to be. So when this movie came out, I was like, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. We love Ryan, right? But is he, are they like, you know, a Margo? But I'm like, damn, like, they're a little too old to be playing Ken and Barbie. But I'm also very glad that we didn't get, like, 20-year-olds to play them because I feel like that wouldn't have had I feel like the same overall impact because the maturity even though it's a very silly movie still brought something to it you know brought something else I mean a little bit more wholesome and it's just such a fun movie that had such a really good message that a lot of people are really really hating on it I'm just like I just I don't understand but then again you know I prefer Barbie over Oppenheimer batteries about to run out per usual number one is but of course Tell us so much to discover, and your sad face makes me discover angry feelings for you. Yeah, I absolutely freaking love this movie. It's so strange, it's weird, it's beautiful. I love the look, the style. A Frankenstein kind of like retelling. We have her kind of finding herself sexually. She's finding just herself generally, but then we kind of focus on the sexuality deal a lot, which I know a lot of people have issues with. But overall, I really, really love this movie. I have to cut it short because the battery is about to run out because it's blinking on me. This is how I'm ranking the 10 Best Picture nominees that are nominated for the 2024 Oscars. So I'll be going live sometime in the next week to do my Gold Derby uh, ballot. We're going to be filling it out to see who I feel is going to win. And, uh, and then we'll be doing our reaction video. Not live the reaction, but we are doing the predictions um, live. So put your notifications on so you don't miss a beat. All right, until next time, I'll see you guys at concessions. Bye.